Hey, this is Julian from Spartan Alliance. Uh, you're sitting on the online prosperity show with Prosper. Um, our main focus in this episode is to teach you guys how the three pillars of business, sales, recruitment, and finance, it's not as scary as you guys think. And really the biggest thing is you need to find resources and a comprehensive organization that can actually help your business grow. Um, hopefully you guys get a lot out of it today and thanks for having me on the show. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, we found King Julian. Julian, how are you doing, my man? Good, mate. Nice to be here. Thanks for, thanks for the invite. Fantastic. Now, Julian leads a team at the Spartan Alliance here in Australia, where they have ready-made solutions for Australian businesses. And the Spartan Alliance prides itself for having every solution that you might need to grow and scale your business. Now, they rely on the three pillars of business, which is sales, recruitment, and finances, all right? So as any business person that we um, you, who would be in our audience, your mission is to actually have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And if you've got people on your side and people on your team that already have solutions that are designed to help you um, grow and scale, then why not? So that's the reason why we brought in King Julian so he can elaborate to us what it is that they do at Spartan Alliance and um, how we can benefit from their services. Thank you so much, uh, Julian, for uh, joining us on the show today. Not a problem, thanks for having me again. Great, now Spartan Alliance, what happens there? So basically, like you were saying before, Prosper, uh, the main reason why we society, you know, created this mission was to enable businesses to grow, scale, but then also prosper as well. So in the you know, thousands of business owners that I've spoken to over the years, what I find is that most businesses are set up to run as a job. So basically the business owners buy themselves a job and in five, six, 10 years time, potentially what they've actually done is close down the business. Maybe, maybe they've sold it for profit, very unlikely close down the business, but they've actually cost them the last five, seven, 10 years of a lot of hard work really for nothing. House is not paid off. They haven't scaled the business over $2 million, which is, you know, point something less than 1% of businesses that actually make it to that 10 year mark would actually do that. So it's a very small number of people that are actually going to get what they wanted and what they started that business for out of that business. So our main focus is to help them, like you said, in three pillars, sales, sales strategies, business support, uh, recruitment to actually scale their business to find the right people for the culture and values for their business. And then ultimately to reduce debt, minimize tax, and have, accumulate some sort of assets at the end of that you know business process or during that business process. That that's the whole thing of Spartan Alliance. Understandable. That looks like you know a, a well and tr trusted uh, partnership that every small business needs to have. Now let's yeah. dwell a little bit on the first thing that you provide, which is sales, because. Without sales or the you know selling of your products and services, you would not have cash flow. And sales, no. is, as we know it, is the cornerstone of increasing your revenue and ultimately the profit of the business. How do you help people um, with that uh, pillar of, of um, business strategy? Uh, main focus for us is two parts. Uh, first of all, well, there's actually a few parts, components to that strategy as a whole. Number one is getting the business owner to actually enjoy the sales process. Probably I would say, you know, in the numbers that I've known, probably 80% of business owners hate selling. Um, the reason why, I don't know why they don't like selling their own product or they want to push it on to someone else. As a business owner, especially these days, you need to know a little bit about every aspect. It doesn't mean you need to do it, but you at least need to know how the, that, that aspect of the business or that, you know, component of the business works. Whether you do your own Facebook marketing or not, you kind of need to know how that works. Whether you, you know, where does the leads come from? What's the qualification process? What's the, you know, the, the sales funnel and how you can actually streamline that? So our main focus is to create probably number one, a sales funnel for companies. The second component to, well, first of all is mentality. Second one is the sales funnel. And the thirdly, uh, the thing that I really enjoy working on is actually the business strategy. You know, is there someone that can be aligned or, or create an alliance with another partnership or a business that can actually help drive business to you 
or you can work with to enhance the value that you give to your consumers. That, that to me is paramount. And the way that I feel that business is moving forward is the ability to find those gaps in your business and actually you know, articulate that to another business or company or friend or whatever and actually fill that gap for your consumers. That's, that's the first pillar of sales, that I think. Understandable. So you did mention that, you know, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs do want to sort of offload or outsource the whole selling aspect to other people. Just in case they decide to do it in-house, there's going to be a component of recruitment of which you also help people at Spartan Alliance with um, recruitment. Because obviously having the right uh, people in your business is quite paramount for your success. Now, how do you help people for looking uh, for the right people with the right feet and the right culture with the right attitude, um, you know, for the business that you're looking um, or you, you help? Yeah. Again, there's a pre-stage to recruitment. Number one is, you know, what I've gone through in businesses previously is a vision, mission, values kind of uh, portfolio. Uh, most people do not have a vision for what their business is going to look like. They'd lot, they have an idea, but it's not really articulate. So, so when they're trying to explain it to someone, even they don't know where their business is. So I actually did a Facebook live the other day about clarity. And, and if you're walking through the jungle and you're cutting down the trees and you're trying to create that path to your oasis, what you tend to find is that even you don't know where you're going. So if you're going to run a business, it's all right if you're a sole trader and you're just kind of, like I said, buying yourself a job. I do think there's three stages to entrepreneurship or at least business ownership. Number one is you're a business operator. Let's say you're a hairdresser and all you want to do is cut hair and you're making a great income for yourself. And there's no good, bad or, you know, ugly to any of these people. You know, don't get caught up in wanting to take over the world <laughs> with, with a massive vision. Maybe you just want a small piece of the pie and that's absolutely fine. You know, don't get caught up in other people's dreams. Um, maybe you are a business op, uh, op, um, owner, sorry. So, uh, no, sorry, business owner is the one that owns the business and actually uh, works in the business. Business operator stands back from it and they're actually managing as a whole. And then you've got an entrepreneur. So let's say if you're in the hairdressing industry, you know, that person is probably one that wants to take on, you know, 10 stores, have, you know, joint venture with GHD, have their own hair product range. You know, that, that to me is an entrepreneur. So, kind of fit into where you feel comfortable. So back onto clarity, as you're walking through the jungle, you need to find where your oasis is, right? So you need to make sure that you've walked that path in your mind so many times that it's very, very clear. Because when you get your people in your business to actually walk that path with you, it needs to be safe, it needs to be, you know, you need to walk confidently, you need to walk, you know, um, you need to look like at least that you're going towards the goal as a group. So if they're walking on that path and even you're not too sure where you're going or, yeah, I think it's down this way, but it could be, then you'll find that people leave your business quite quickly. So overall, you need to have a vision for the business. There needs to be values in which the, the people in your business, whether contractors or employees or just people that come into the business, understand that these are the non-negotiable standards of the business. Um, and then your mission and exactly what you're trying to achieve for your consumer, for your clients, for your deliverables. So that's the pre-stage before you even start thinking about scaling, I think. The thing that we can actually help you out with both is not only creating that vision for yourself and making it more clearer in your own mind, but then also finding the right people, different strategies you can use. You know, there's different job placement platforms. That's why we work on Seek at the moment. It's our own in-house platform. Um, so uh, career search. So basically we want to create a platform that people can actually place ads on the difference in our platform is for, um, you know, for a certain price, we can actually write posts and actually give you five short lists of people within seven days of posting that ad. So in regards to recruitment and the, and the difference between us and a Seek or an Indeed or any of those type of placement, uh, job placement platforms, we want to do stuff in house and remove the sort of uncertainty of or what the business owner is not skilled at, i.e. writing ads, finding people, shortlisting people, and the time it's going to take to shortlist 150 resumes, we can do that for you. So that's the game changer in regards to our platform. Understandable. Well, we'll be talking a little bit more on that um, a little bit later on. Now, Julian, you 
kept dwelling on clarity. You kept dwelling on knowing, uh, you know, the trajectory of where your business is going because, you know, even in our day-to-day lives, your windscreen is much bigger than the rearview mirror. So you need to be sure exactly where you're going. And that also entails knowing your finances, all right? So yeah. when somebody knows their numbers, it becomes principal in knowing how are they growing and how are they scaling. How do you help yeah. people um, to work on this very crucial part of their business? Yeah, well, knowing your numbers is, is imperative. And, you know, the biggest, you know, downfall in regards to people running a small business is because the numbers are scary and there's bills and all those sorts of things, I find that the energy spent is spent on the wrong area. I, you know, we've got all these bills, you're in a retail shop and, and there's all these bills and you owe money to suppliers and, and the rents due and this, they will always be there. <laughs> you know, fixed or direct or indirect or fixed or, you know, non-fixed costs will always be in a business. The thing that a business owner should be spending time and energy on is creating more business, not looking backwards to see how much was owed. Do you know what I mean? So first of all, get to know your numbers. Now, this is what I see also, which is I feel a massive failure in a small business, is they've got their sister-in-law doing their books, you know, uh, over a couple of wines, uh, which is not good pre-books, right? So um, their, their sister-in-law does the books and um, they're not, they don't, look, they're going to do an okay job if you are a home business or something like that. But if you actually want to make something from the business and actually have something that's long lasting and actually a a, a legacy for the kids or actually make that business work for you rather than the other way around, you work for that business, you're going to have to get some professional help. It doesn't have to be as expensive as you think. Have a conversation with people that actually know people in the industry or, you know, someone like us that can actually guide you through that process. But you're going to have to see a professional to get professional help. Does that make sense? You know, does, it, does that cost you a little bit more money than, than you know, a bottle of wine on a Friday night once a month? Yes. <laughs> but the return on investment is much, much higher. Then also those people, and again, this is where I see the downfall, is that they've got an accountant or a bookkeeper giving them financial advice. You need to have experts in the field of where they're experts in. Yeah? If you have an accountant that is giving you financial advice and whether you buy the mortgage or not, he might say, yes, I know you can afford it, but he shouldn't be giving you advice on what strategy to use into creating wealth. That's not his, that's not his expertise. So you need to find a holistic approach, and that's why we created Spartan Lines also, a holistic approach to accounting and bookkeeping, financial planning and wealth creation, and also asset accum- uh, accumulation. So it has to be a collective group where Everyone's working for the same person, which is you. If you go to the property guy, he's going to sell you mortgages. If you go to the shares guy, he's going to sell you shares. If you, you know, so, so if you're working with a bigger organization, they can holistically look at your finances, see where you're at, go through your goals and actually know your numbers much, much better and guide you through the process. This is not a process that takes six months. This is the rest of your life. That's, that's the biggest difference. Most people think, oh, how come I'm not making this much money? There's, I've been open for 12 months or they put a time frame on it. Business doesn't work like that. <laughs> Understandable. So in all this, um, you know, growth that happens within a business, um, it, it happens through not an overnight sort of spurge. It, there's time that's involved because it takes 21 years to be 21 years old. And um, in between, we've noticed that uh, technology is changing, um, you know, drastically. You wake up, especially for my kind of job, I wake up every single day just to see if no one has created an app or um, a program that's designed to take my job away. If so, then I take a shower and then I sleep on my desk, you know. Um, Yeah. How do you help um, businesses with, you know, dealing with, changes in technology and staying ahead of their competition, you know, with the latest that is happening in the world um, of technological advancements. Yeah. I, again, the biggest thing is you have to understand that things are changing. You know, I saw a post from a group that I'm part of, um, you know, Facebook ads are going up and the reach is less. And, and I even, I think just recently there was, there was some, I think it might've been yourself, but basically Facebook is limiting the posts that see it. And, you know, I go back to one of my old companies 
and we'd post something and we had like a limited reach and we're seeing, you know, 800, 1200 people reached. Now we have a much, much bigger audience and we're getting 250. You know what I mean? And it's been shared four times. You know what I mean? So, so you know, you, we can complain about it. We can say, hey, Facebook's getting too expensive. Um, it is what it is. Same as years ago when, you know, the, the new technology was having a website. Well, now the new technology is probably having a web, well, definitely having a website. If you don't have a website, that's just like not a credible business. The next thing I believe that the digital marketing is going towards would be video production, you know, social media. You know, social proof is, is massive. Social proof is paramount. Almost to a detriment to people like ourselves that have a limited social proof but 15 years of business experience. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So that's one thing that we're working on here, obviously, um, in regards to that social proof. And I think all businesses need to work on that. You know, the amount of people that, especially in recruitment, that are looking at your business, look at your website, look at your Facebook, look at your LinkedIn. Look at my personal LinkedIn. There's, you know... 60, 70 people a week that look at my LinkedIn. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, and I, I'm only, like, I'm not even, I'm nothing. So, so for, the, for the bigger corporations, um, it's going to be much, much higher. So, so what we post and what we sort of um, advertise ourselves to be has to be congruent between all platforms. That's, that's probably the biggest thing. And you just need to be, keep in touch. So the biggest thing that we're doing, um, I've got experts um, at CMG that are working on our, you know, social media and, and those sorts of things and, and Facebook leads. And, and I, I, if I don't know it myself, I've got to find an export, expert in that field. But the market is changing. You've got to roll with it. It's, it's not going backwards, you know. It's kind of like, it's like complaining about having to use zero as opposed to paper invoices. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <laughs> that that it reminds me... Yeah, that reminds me of um, Kodak. You remember Kodak? Yeah, Back in yeah, the time, yeah. we have a film, 24 exposure, uh, but now, Honestly. yeah, and have to wait a week for you to get the yeah. photo. Um, exactly. Although that was kind of fun when you pick them up from Kmart, right? <laughs> that was kind of cool. You, know? <laughs> you hope 20 out of 24 are half decent and you hope that no one opens the back before it ruins the whole film. <laughs> uh, understandable. The, the worst part about uh, places like that is if it was a one hour processing um, yeah. for the photos, you only got a, um, you know, 25 minutes parking. So <laughs> a quarter, <laughs> quarter of <laughs> And that was probably the first, that was first world problems back then, right? So yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously with all those things all put together, um, there's a lot to learn. There's, there's a lot that you can impart, especially the knowledge and also the expertise that you do. Do you then maybe walk people through either coaching or do you help them uh, or do you just tell them what to do and then they um, go out there and uh, sort it out for themselves? Um, coaching is really important only because many of the business owners that we deal with um, honestly have no idea. And that's not being disrespectful. <clears throat> when I first started business, I had no idea either. But, you know, there, there's no one sets out to lose their business, you know, and with the stats that haven't changed in, you know, decades globally, where roughly 80% of businesses open today are closed down in, you know, five years time and the 20% left over, 80% of those are closed down in, you know, so roughly 96% are closed down in seven to 10 years, roughly, let's say. So no one sets out to fail in business, to lose a home, to remortgage, like no one does that. So why is it still after all these years, why is that still such a majority? Well, it's just come down to support and resources and knowing who to talk to. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's why I set up the whole organization because we had such a, uh, a massive, well, you know, stuff up years ago where we were trying to sell our retail shop and we had to use a lawyer, like I was saying previously, had to use a lawyer that did such a bad job that I actually had to get the purchaser's legal team to sell my own business to the purchaser. So as a business owner for you know, four or five years and running in that retail shop, having to get the purchaser's legal team to sell the shop from me to him, I was like, man, that was painful. And it cost me two, three times more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's very difficult and everyone wants to take your money. That's the problem. You know, everyone wants to take your money. Um, in regards to recruitment, I was talking to someone and I wish I remember who it was, but I can't remember who the conversation was with. And they designed, or their friend designed an app they could find the perfect customer 
for the perfect person for the perfect job. They created an app for that. If anyone's out there that sees this, please get in touch with me. Because <laughs> I can't remember who it was with. <laughs> this was a, you know, a little while ago. And she went to 12 recruitment agencies to sell this app to them. For me, it's a game changer, right? And the reason why they knocked her back is because they don't make money out of giving them the right person. They make money out of giving them the person and finding the new people. Uh, so she that's, the, that's the thing that I'm talking about. Design People are designing gadgets and apps <laughs> that would take yeah. people's jobs away. So. <laughs> but in saying that, what type of business do you operate that doesn't actually create the value that you paid for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like buying a three-story house and getting a two-story that has no garage. That's not <laughs> what you paid for. You know what I mean? Same price, but it's not what you paid for. Great. So that, that to me is just bad business. And, but unfortunately, that's the model that, you know, a lot of business owners, although I do think that the credibility of business, businesses needs to improve or is improving quite quickly due to the fact of social and, and reviews and all those sorts of things, you, you can't escape running bad business, which is, I, I think that's great. I think that's really good. Understandable. So you have, you know, dropped a lot of value to our audiences and I really, really appreciate that. So if somebody who's watching this, if you haven't uh, subscribed to this channel by now, obviously, I don't know what you're made of. Um, <laughs> because we have... Um, you're doing things the hard way, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we have experts like, um, you know, Julian that are always dropping in to give us their knowledge and help to so that you too can run a business that's profitable and julie and, and 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 enjoyable now julian how can people get a hold of you um you know so that they can you know be part of this Spartan alliance or just get more information about the services and the products that you have to offer them yeah obviously jump on the website spartanalliance.com.au um shoot us an email through there or my personal email uh, julian at spartanalliance.com.au um I'd be happy to answer any any, any uh, questions on that or Julian at SpartanElite.com.au. Either those uh, those three areas you can get me. Uh, we'll probably put it in the, the comments below or something like that. Um, yeah, I, I'm more than happy to add value to, to other business owners. That's exactly what my mission was to do. Um, and if we can support business owners, for me, it's a ripple effect. Um, I don't feel that personally I'm the sort of person like a Tony Robbins that can impact tens of millions of lives or hundreds of millions of lives, whatever it is, um, you know, by speaking uh, in 50 hour se um, seminars. But what I do feel a massive calling is to help the individual business owner that has three or four staff plus their own family, that those three or four staff have their own families, that could be 20 or 30 or 40 people, then that impact and that culture and that feeling of that business that's succeeding impacts other businesses and then those resources can be utilized and that that to me is a win-win-win yeah so everyone in business has to win the consumer has to win the clients have to win that you're representing or deliverables the company has to win the employees or the people that work there has everyone has to win to make business work properly if the company wins and the employees lose there is no employees there will be no company if the employees win uh, and the company loses there won't be any company that, so so everyone has to win and that to me is is just good business you know understandable thank you so much there julian for your time your expertise and your knowledge and also opening up this platform so that um other entrepreneurs like myself and the people in this audience can also get access to the best consulting team um, that actually understands their needs because at the end of the day, there's a lot of gaps in this business. We can't know it all. So if you've got a team behind you that has got their expertise and got you know a whole comprehensive um, business platform that you can plug into whenever you feel like for the support so you can grow and scale your business. Thank you once again there, Julian. Not a problem. Thanks, Prosper. Thanks for having me. Good stuff. Thank you.